Hey there, this is Danny B with Danny B Tutoring, and this is a relatively complicated physics problem involving both kinematics and dynamics. Now this problem happens to be a kinematics problem at heart because the goal of the problem, what we're trying to find, is how fast this box is moving when Bob lets go of it. So since it deals with the motion of the box, this is a kinematics problem. So I set up a kinematics chart time, displacement, initial velocity, final velocity, and acceleration. I put a box around the initial velocity because that's what we're trying to find in the end. I filled in everything else we know from the problem. We know that it's going to slide a distance of 3.8 meters, and that when it slides that distance, it's going to come to rest. That's its final velocity. We don't know the acceleration, and we don't know how long the box is sliding in terms of time, how many seconds it's sliding. Now, we don't need the time in this problem. That's going to be a non-factor. And therefore, there is a kinematics equation that does not involve time at all. And so that's the one that we will use to solve this problem. B squared equals V naught squared plus 2 times A times D. But we need to figure out the acceleration. So we need to look at the dynamics of the problem. That's the forces involved to figure out how it's accelerating. So I draw a, three body, a free body diagram with three forces on this box. We have the weight pulling down, that thanks gravity, mass times gravity. We have the normal force from the roof pushing perpendicular to the incline of the roof. And we have the friction force between the box and the roof that is acting parallel and up the roof. Those three forces will cause this box to accelerate. Now to figure this out, we need to split the forces up into their vector components. We have parallel forces and we have perpendicular forces. Parallel along the incline, perpendicular to the incline. So the parallel forces look like this. Pulling down the incline, we have a component of gravity, a component of the weight, mg sine theta. I'm using x. Pulling up the incline in the negative direction, we have the friction. So I'm going to subtract off mu times n. And that's going to leave us with the net force, which is mass times acceleration. So I built that equation, mg sine x minus mu n equals ma. Thinking perpendicularly to the incline, I have this normal force pushing up. And I have the weight, a component of the weight, pulling down into the incline. That's mg cosine theta. If I take normal force minus mg cosine x, I do not have any net force there. I will not have any acceleration, so that will balance out to zero. So that tells me that I can now solve for n. I can say that n is equal to mg cosine of x. Now, because I know that, I can uh, plug the normal force, mg cosine x, in for normal force in this parallel equation and do a little mathematical trickery here. So we have mg sine x minus, oops, not equal yet, minus mu times mg cosine x, and we'll set that equal to ma. All right, now I can factor out mg, and I have on this side still, I have sine x minus mu cosine x, and I can set that equal to ma. So that's just factoring out mg on the left-hand side of that equation. Now I can factor out the m's on both sides and realize that g times sine x minus mu cosine x is equal to a, the acceleration. So the acceleration is just going to be a fraction of g. It will actually turn out to be a, to be a negative value around negative 2. You'll find that by plugging in the pieces from your problem, solve for a. And then you can plug that into this equation here and finally solve for V naught. All right, I hope that helps.